Hey pod squad, welcome back. I'm Diksha and I'm a, let's see, PGY1 slash intern slash first year podiatric medical resident. <laughs> and today we're going to go straight in to talking about what podiatric medical school is truly like. I know we've made previous videos about the curriculum, but I'm going to repeat that one more time. But I'll give a little more about what the experience was actually like. I'll provide a little more information on that. So we'll start off with talking about how the path to it is obviously, as a lot of you may know if you're watching in your pre-med, it's intensive. There's a lot that you have to prepare for. You have to take all the pre-med courses, take the MCAT, and not only that, but trying to participate in all the extracurriculars and trying to be the best well-rounded applicant that you could possibly be. And there's the, the typical situations where you also have a lot of naysayers as you're going through the path because people will tell you you can't make it or something will happen along the way and they'll say, hey, do you really think this is your passion in life? You interview and you get into one of the nine podiatric medical schools. Now there's also one that is starting in Texas. It is the 10th podiatric medical school, which is exciting. It's the same subjects, same topics, same requirements to graduate podiatric medical school. However, it might vary in when you do what. So usually for the first two years, you have didactics and then you may have you may have clinical experience sprinkled in here and there. And then afterwards, you would rotate for two years. So let me back up a little bit. What was experience like for the first two years? I will say for my program that I went to, me and Yona, we both went to it. It was CSPM, which is in Oakland, California. And for that program, you have you actually start rotations your second year. It's not as, it, it's doable. That's that's all I have to say, it's doable. Of course, because we all made it. But you're going to feel a lot of pressure your, with balancing, of course, your rotations and your schoolwork. And it's going to feel like that even in your third year, no matter where you go, because you have to study. So it's not like after your didactics for the first two years where you're taking all those basic science courses. And if you want to see the details about that, uh, view the video that I'll link here. But it's not just that. It's uh, You have to now study everything in relation to the patients that you see that day. You should be going back, studying on that, studying on any other coursework that you have, reading papers. So... All of that can become time intensive and exhausting. And there's a lot of tears involved in all of this because you're going to realize that if, if you are joining uh, this path, or even if you're just observing, you're constantly feeling like, okay, everyone around me is performing at their best, which is not necessarily true, but that's how you feel. That, that pressure will always be there. There are sleepless nights. Of course, people can balance it and they can handle having a good sleep, good, sleep, good work-life balance, taking care of their kids, their own families, and still managing to do excellent. It's all about time management. First year, as you may have heard plenty of times, it's a lot like drinking out of fire hydrant. So... For me, even though I survive off of social encounters and just being sociable, it was tough because the first two months, I got into the rhythm of going to class, you know, what was it? I think it was around eight to five. I'm, I'm just maybe exaggerating, or maybe it was less, I don't remember. Maybe it started earlier, but I got back, I'd work out a little bit, watch a show, eat, and study. And that was the daily routine and whatever socialization I wanted, I'd get during classes or, you know, before and after that became tough. There's a lot of trying to figure out what works for you because after those two months, people had already kind of established their friendships 
And I was out there thinking, oh no, I missed that window of opportunity, which isn't necessarily true, but that's kind of how it can work sometimes. I, I'll speak for myself, saw that forming bonds was very important to have that network of people that you can go reach out to for moral support. And it could also be outside of school, of course. That's It's really important to have those relationships. You will re- be relying on them. Because there will be times where someone will say something to you, a professor, an attending, a, another student, a, a peer, you know, anybody, a patient, anything could happen. Uh, even your grades could happen where you slip up and you worked so hard tirelessly all night. And you'll also realize so much can be done in one day within those 24 hours. You can go from wondering how the heck you can balance maybe three or four classes to balancing everything you're doing. all So many classes and the extra studying you're doing on the side and the research you're doing on the side. Here, a lot of the rotations are just figuring out what podiatry rotation and surgery rotation, general surgery rotation, what that's going to be like, uh, how you're supposed to perform, what your role is as a student, and then eventually as a surgeon yourself in residency. That's what a lot of third year is like. You're picking up new terms, you are trying to situate yourself with patients, trying to figure out how you approach everything with a patient. Your workup and then trying to attach everything and apply everything that you learned from class to clinic. You're worried about whether you're performing you're worried about uh, what? what is the patient thinking? Oh, I don't even know anything. Why am I working with the patient? And by the way, there are residents looking over you. There's, there's upperclassmen looking over you and there's attendings looking over you. So it's not, it's not like you're ever alone in medicine. I have heard attendings say, you will always have what feels like backup or someone to protect you at all costs until you become an attending and then you're wondering what the heck happened. There's a lot of fear that you have to overcome throughout podiatric medical school and residency and beyond. It it doesn't end, but it's all about feeling challenged every day and making sure you're growing. So, which you will regardless whether you want to or not. So third year also consists of learning hands-on things. So what do I mean by hands-on? If you aren't familiar with what podiatry is like, that means a lot of maybe casting for patients for their orthotics or trying to figure out if they need any modifications for orthotics they already have or shoe gear or if they have pain in a digit, how to help with that. Athletic taping for different situations. A lot of patients will come in with plantar fasciitis and helping people with their everyday daily pain. So realizing where to inject for a patient. And that even applies to surgery because there will be some upper class and residents attendings who will allow you to help, help with any of that. Surgery also, the OR, it's a whole thing by itself as well because Not only are you trying to hold yourself together, be able to express what's on your mind, answer questions properly that you're asked about, and anatomical questions. Oh, what screw, what hardware do I use? Those kind of questions. The beauty of all of it is that there's a lot of growth that occurs. The entire time, you feel like you have no clue how all of it is happening. Some nights you're just thinking, I hope I perform as well as I need to the next day because did I not plan properly for this or what? And there'll be nights like that. There'll be nights where you just can't sleep because something's on your mind, something or the other, because life also happens outside of medicine. Now, because we're all trained as surgeons in residency, there's also another added layer of making sure whenever you can that you are suturing or practicing your suturing skills and your hand tying. I'd have to remind myself quite often because I'd forget. And even right now I'm thinking, oh man, I need to get a lot of practice in before I begin. Even when I'm hanging out or I'm doing 
anything outside of studying or practicing my suturing, my hands-on skills. I always have my brain half there, if you know what I mean. I Being present is pretty tough, and I know a lot of people can relate and agree with me in podiatric medical school or, again, in residency. It's hard to separate our lives, but that's, again, an art that you begin learning when you're going through this. Moving on to fourth year. Fourth year is full of doubting yourself even more than ever before, but also a lot of growth because things things are expected of you. You're Basically, fourth year is all interviews, month-long interviews, where you're trying to figure things out, trying to get into residency, and studying for your board exams, and also applying to residency, interviewing, and uh, then after that, sort of smooth sailing. So it's all, it's all easy at the end of the day if you just keep your mind on the goal. Poetic Medical School is awesome. Awesome is such a silly word to use for it, and not the greatest adjective. You're always going to see different cases with every patient that you come across, but somehow there's also the bread and butter and you get used to seeing that. If you end up cutting nails, you may have some debris that may possibly get in your eyes, so use eye protection, and you might get, get some things in your hair here and there, but that's, that's medicine. That's just expected regardless. This is all really worth it, and it's so fun because even though I didn't explain it that way, there, there was a lot in the process that was beautiful because I knew that that's what it took to get me to where I am right now and will continue. I mean, persistence is necessary, that perseverance, no matter what happens, no matter every time I get knocked over, get back up. But it's not even being knocked over, really. It's just everything that builds a person into becoming a physician. And that's what's necessary, right? Because we are helping people with their lives, with their health, with the quality of their lives. So it's important that we are trained in such a manner that we understand that. And so, yeah, Podiatric Medical School, more than a blast. And especially for someone who is interested in foot and ankle and everything that comes with it, which is the variety of cases, the fact that it's so hands-on, and the fact that you really get to know your patients so well, the rapport, I mean, it's unmatched and it's everything. It's everything that I wanted all anyway, together. Be sure to subscribe and like this video and hit the bell icon so you could follow us for more. Uh, thank you for watching the video and Pod Squad, signing out.